Eat Well, Travel Often is sponsored by The Book House, an independent bookstore with a cozy atmosphere where you can browse a plethora of fantastic selections all while enjoying a delicious hot beverage. The shelves at The Book House are specially curated to be packed with gems that make for exceptional reads for patrons of all ages. Owner Nadej Nickel also features many local artists and artisans in a special gallery space, as well as original gifts from socially responsible companies. Their events calendar includes readings from authors, topic discussions, workshops, book club meetings, and more. Whether you're looking for a classic, a bestseller, a hidden treasure, an original gift that gives back, or just a community to join, visit The Book House, located at 281 Essex Street in Milburn, New Jersey, or visit them online at thebookhousemilburn.com. Tell them we said hello. Welcome to Eat Well, Travel Often, a podcast about the intersection of food, travel, the environment, the mind, body, and spirit. I'm Melissa Goldberg. Food is the lens through which I look at life, where it comes from, how it's cooked, its origin. Food creates a community, and how we connect with each other through food is an expression of who we are. I hope to share with you my passion for food from everything from book to plate. Travel can be a transcending experience. It's a great way to relieve stress. It can take you away from your problems. I even find planning a vacation keeps my mind off of things. I love dreaming about where to go next, but we cannot travel every day. We need to find other ways to help us respond to the daily stresses of life. Today, I am deviating a bit from talking directly about food and travel to focus on the mind and the body. I meditate almost every day. It has made a huge impact on my life, and that is why I am so excited to be speaking with Susie Yalov schwartz She's the CEO and founder of Unplugged Meditation, the author of Unplugged, a simple guide to meditation for busy skeptics and modern soul seekers, and the creator of the Unplugged Meditation app. Almost a decade ago, a three-minute meditation experience changed the course of Susie's life forever. Full disclosure, I have known Susie my entire life. Literally, her mom and my mom were friends before we were born. Although we live on different coasts, we have been close for more years than either of us would like to admit. Whenever I see a full moon, I think of Susie. As a special to the Eat Well, Travel Often listener, Susie is offering a free 30-day trial to the Unplugged app. Use code unplug 30 that's u n p l u g 30 also stay tuned to after my interview with Susie is my book to plate segment you will learn about david boulet's new doctor chef series where my husband and i got to meet david boulet and dr andrew weil also if you could subscribe and rate the podcast that would be fantastic now my interview with Susie. Hello, Susie. How are you? I'm great. It's so exciting to be on your show. I'm really excited to follow you every single audio that you do. And I'm thrilled that you're sharing this with the world because you have so much to offer. Well, I am so excited to talk to you. So I'm just going to jump right in here. Three minutes and your life was changed forever. There's not much you can do in three minutes that changed your life. Tell me, what was going on in your life that took it only three minutes of meditation to change you? You know, the truth is, is that stress can really kill you. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had that experience where you're so stressed out that your whole body just gets hot and you just feel anxious and shortness of breath. And I kind of was having that experience when I was in New York. And my mother-in-law, who is a psychotherapist, said, you need to breathe. And she guided me on this three-minute exercise, which was basically slowing down my breath and visualizing myself in my happy place, which was Jamaica at the time. So after those three minutes, I literally felt like a different human being. I felt calm. I felt centered and I wasn't thinking about all of the things that were making me anxious. And afterwards I said, what is that? And she said, it's called meditation. You should really learn how to do that. And I'm like, okay, you're right. I'm going to. So that's kind of how my journey began. 
what were you doing that was so stressful? Like what was, what, is there one thing or was it a combination of things or? You know, what happened was I moved to, I literally left my dream job in New York. I moved to Los Angeles and I finally um, started with my three children and I started to work again. So I flew to a trip to New York without my kids and I didn't have the backup in Los Angeles that I did when I was in New York. So that was the thing that was making me really anxious because I, I was worried about the kids. I was thinking of all the things that could happen that of course didn't. I was wasting my energy on that. And that's kind of what triggered it. So many people think you need to be a Buddhist monk studying meditation for, uh, for decades to find the benefits of meditation. You have learned that's not so much. You can do it in a shorter amount of time. Um, what are some of the benefits you've had since you started meditating? Ugh, I mean, where can I begin? First of all, what happens is when you meditate, it's almost like someone gives you the remote control to your own brain. So I am able to pause my emotions during those moments of severe stress, anxiety, or before I kind of like take it out on the people around me. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm stressed, I, it affects not only myself, but it really affects the people who I'm talking to. So what happens is with meditation, it allows me to create some space between my mind and between the present moment. And it brings me back to the present moment and slows everything down. So in, in a shorter way of saying it, I can calm myself pretty quickly. I can also make myself happy in five seconds. I can also, you know, be more focused, be more productive, um, not stress eat as much as I normally do. So all of those things are just some of the benefits that I get. But what's so interesting about this practice is that it works differently on every single person who does it. So for instance, we have clients that are coming in who are in severe pain sent to us by the UCLA pain center and they're walking out of the studio, not in as much pain. So what happens is why is that? When your mind is focused on the pain, the pain gets increased. But when you focus your mind on the present moment or when you redirect your mind, you decrease your pain. So for them, it's been just incredible. We've had cancer patients. We've had people who've been going through IVF treatments. We have a fertility doctor who sends us their patients all the time. And we have now we have three babies. To, you know, This is the parents saying that. Um, we have three babies who these women were on their last leg, the last IVF treatment. They came to unplug every day for two weeks and got pregnant. Well, let's step back. Let's step back a bit. So um, you were a successful journalist and a spokesperson for years and years. And you worked at Glamour magazine and you were on the Today Show and you've been on Oprah. But, you know, what was this aha moment that made that you realize you wanted to open a meditation business? What happened was when I came back after that trip of my mother-in-law teaching me how to meditate, I was like, God, where can I learn how to meditate? So I started Googling meditation in Los Angeles. And as a New Yorker, I found the offerings not desirable. They were either too long, so four-week programs, six-week programs, four solid day programs, too expensive, $1,400 a week of your salary. And I was like, wait, where's like the dry bar of meditation? I don't want to blow people's hair out. I want to blow people's minds. I'm like, <laughs> And so I started Googling everywhere and guess what? I couldn't find it. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. So I said to my husband, I'm like, I should quit fashion and open up a meditation studio. And he said, you should learn how to meditate first. And I'm like, okay, this is the plan. I'm going to learn how to meditate and then I'm going to open up the studio. So what happened was I originally started doing all this research. I started going to every single class. I started doing every single YouTube video podcast. And there wasn't, it was slim pickings at the time. So this was 2014. And I realized meditation in my previous job, I used to do makeovers, but the meditation really needed a makeover. There were a lot of teachers there who were just saying something that they could say in a shorter amount of time and stretching it out for an hour. Or they were dressed in a way that might've felt hippie or kind of just not in alignment. And the studios that I've gone to were very, you know, filled with smoke and sage and, you know, dirty. <laughs> I'm like, okay, we got to fix this. 
So what happened was I called the top meditation teacher in Los Angeles. His name was Steve Ross at the time. He had his own yoga studio. And I said, I want to book a private with you. So I booked a private with him. He, he was unbelievable. And then on the second round, I said to him, you know, to be honest with you, I don't want to do private. This is what I really want to do. He's like, wow, that's never been done before. Um, whatever you need, I will help you. No questions asked, no money exchanged. I want to see this happen. So he was just, A, my first teacher that I hired for the studio, and B, one of the greatest things. He also sent me his studio manager. So she really helped me kind of organize my business because I knew nothing about what I was doing. So I have a question. So besides him, when you started talking about your idea, what did some of these meditation teachers and places you went to, what did they think of it? Did, did they think you were crazy? Like that's not meditation or what, it, what were their thoughts? Okay. First of all, I was so appreciative of the fact that everybody wanted to see this happen because, you know, meditation was basically the five minutes of Shavasana at the end of the yoga class that everybody ran out on. So they really loved the idea of having a space that was just devoted to meditation. Now they all wanted to you know, there were a lot of people that wanted to work there. There were also a lot of people who didn't want to work there because they were attached to their own forms of meditation. So there's, I would say, there's a ton of different ways to meditate, but the primary ones are TM, Vedic, mindfulness, Vipassana, Yoga Nidra. And so some of those people were like, okay, well, I need to give people a mantra for them to meditate. That's what's in alignment with me. And I said, no, 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 no. We're not using Sanskrit mantras. This is going to be meditation for people who wouldn't do this. I wanted to recreate that thing that I experienced where I stopped stress in three minutes and I felt better in three minutes. And I wanted to make it more powerful, almost like a television segment. You know, when you're like watching a segment and in five minutes, you not only learn what it's about, learn how to do it, but you walk away inspired, wanting to change your life. That's kind of how I wanted Unplugged to be. So it was, it was kind of figuring out, look, there were some teachers who were amazing, but they weren't passionate and fun. And I didn't think people would want to meditate with them. And there were some teachers who were passionate and fun, but they weren't amazing teachers. So it was a, it was a lot of like trying to figure out what it was going to be. And so we created our own teacher training program to kind of take all these amazing teachers and train them in a way where they had this background. They've already been certified. They've already been trained, but we almost, it was almost like media training them, Melissa. So they could kind of, clarify their message and empower the people in the room. Well, you have, so you have two studios now. Um, tell me about them. Like, you know, first time person coming in, what's the experience? Do you need to be like a meditator joint? Can you be a beginner? I always say we're like the gateway drugs for the people with deeper practices, but we've had people coming to us for four years. So imagine walking into your home and it's diffused with orange essential oil. So you walk in and you smell it and it smells happy. You're greeted with a friendly face who what is very welcoming to you. Um, the space is spotless in all white walls with pale wood floors. And the retail is the only pop of color that you see and it's all retail that is kind of just there to enhance your practice. And then you wait in this beautiful lobby filled with people who are kind and just want to feel good. And someone rings the bell and then you open up this door and this door into this room is lit purple. So all of a sudden you have this kind of lighting that just brings you down to calm. There's a very faint music playing that doesn't have any pattern of beats so that it kind of puts your brain in theta or you just basically feel calm walking into the room. And then you sit down and there's these padded cushions. They're almost like chaise lounges. So you could keep your legs straight and you have back support, or you can lay it flat on the ground and sit flat on the ground, lay flat on the ground. And in front of you is a teacher who's certified, who's confident, who guides you basically five minutes telling you a little story about 
why you should meditate, where you wish you had a pen and a piece of paper so you could write it down and then tweet it afterwards, but nobody's allowed to have that. There's no cell phones allowed too. So there's no buzzing, there's no beeping, there's no blue light in this room. And then she rings a bell or he rings a bell and everybody just closes their eyes, gets guided through an experience. She or he rings a bell at the end, they open their eyes. And basically the instructor, the guide says, have a beautiful day. I'll be outside if you have any questions. So you're not held hostage in the room by other people's questions. When you go to a class, you're going for that guide. You're not going for the other people in the room, but yet you get that personal attention afterwards with the guide. And then you walk out and everybody feels 10 times better than they did walking in. Is each guide, does each guide, is it different? Like do people pick that guide or is, um, what was I going to say? Does it matter who you're going to? Is it a different experience with a different guide and a different teacher? Yes. I mean, the schedule is stacked in a way where you could hit three classes in a row. So let's say a Saturday morning, I go in 930 aromatherapy, 1030 guided imagery, 1130 a sound bath, 1230 um, breath work, uh, 130 guided meditation or mindfulness. So it's stacked in a way where you can hit all of them and you're like, whoa, I just left my body. It's almost like you went on vacation for two weeks, but you literally just sat in a room for 45 minutes. I noticed you have principles of meditation. Does each of these classes follow your principles of meditation? Yeah, it's very simple. We basically tell people that you're going to close your eyes. I mean, a lot of people here, I think this is important to say, MLS, because a lot of people think they can't meditate because they think too much and they have to turn their brain off to meditate. A, that's like the number one myth. You can't turn your brain off, first of all. The second thing is people think they can't meditate because they can't sit still. And the third thing is they think they can't meditate because they have no time. Those are the three biggest obstacles that we basically have every single day. Um, So basically, meditation is very simple no matter what style you use. You're going to close your eyes. You're going to slow down your breath. You bring your awareness to your breath and the experience of breathing. That's step one. Step two is you let it slip away. So you're in this like space where you're not focusing on breath or placing your awareness on that. And you're not thinking, you're just kind of like in this sweet spot where you're just present 100%. And then whether that lasts a second, five seconds, a minute, your mind will wander. What am I doing for dinner tonight? I need to go to the store to pick it up. And you might go down that spiral of story. And then what you do is you bring it back to step one. Awareness on your breath, on a word, on a scent, let it go. Step three, mind wanders, bring it back. And that's all it is. It's a dance between awareness and being in the present moment and thinking. I've read that there's studies that meditation really changes your brain structure. Can it? I mean, is that is that the truth? It is 110% the truth. And I always like to tell people to go on the unplug.com, unplug.com. And they can look at the bottom of the page. They'll see why meditate or health benefits. Click on that. There's a Harvard neuroscientist named Sarah Lazar who did a, mat, a study at Mass General where she showed people who had never meditated before, who meditated every day for eight weeks for, I think it was 23 minutes a day. It was either 23 or 28. And she shows the before and after MRI scans of the brain and the areas where it increases the gray matter in the prefrontal cortex and it decreases in the amygdala, which is stress, fight, or flight. So what happens with meditation is when you're able to pause before you react, you're strengthening your brain. Just as you, when you do a bicep curl, you strengthen your muscles. When you meditate, you strengthen your brain. So you're building the prefrontal cortex, which is where executive decision-making is, compassion, focus, awareness, and you're shrinking the amygdala, which is stress, anxiety, and fight or flight. Why is everybody not doing this? I have no idea. It is the easiest thing on the planet to do. And it is the most beneficial thing that you can do for your brain. 
and it also builds memory too. And you can so, see all of that from her. You've been doing this for meditating, I guess, almost daily, right? Or daily for, since 2014. Have you noticed changes in you, your relationships, you, how you relate to your kids, to your friends, to your everything? Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. I'm a very scattered person by nature. I like to do everything. I'm an enthusiast. So I want everything and I want it now. I am able to be a little bit more patient and I'm able to be a lot more focused. So what happens is I start my morning every single day, instead of looking at something toxic, like the news or my email, I look at the daily unplug, which is this um, email that comes into my inbox from the unplug meditation app. And it is a positive quote. So it puts me into a positive state and there's a 10 minute meditation in there every single morning. I click that button and I meditate for 10 minutes. It slows down my entire day. So I am able to kind of own my day as opposed to having my day own me. I am able to control my brain as opposed to having my brain control me with all of these things that I do unconsciously. So I'm, I'm living much more consciously. Things that used to Actually, I'm kinder to my children, too. I used to kind of be rushing them all the time and, you know, kind of not. I was never really a yeller, but I was just constantly annoyed. And now I'm able to breathe and respond. That probably is one of the greatest gifts on, on every level. But the biggest one, Melissa, is that I'm able to be control my own ripples. So like, not only do I make myself feel better, but because I'm in a more present state and I kind of set intentions every morning of how I want to be, not what I want to do, but how I want to be, I start my day with kindness, listening a little bit more, etc. Obviously, you know, people listening, we all don't live in LA and we can't just go to your studio. So tell me about your app and how the rest of us can meditate. Well, it's so easy because the app is not only, you know, local, it could be happening in short Hills. It can be happening in Livingston, New Jersey, but it's also people are meditating in Europe. They're meditating in India. They're meditating in Africa and Australia right now with us. Literally, if you download the unplug app, just search unplug in the app store, either Google play or iTunes, you'll see a blue icon that says UN, click that button, download the app, subscribe for one year and try meditating every morning. And not only that, you know how you'll know if your meditation is working. Oh, is that a question? Is that a question for me? No, I want, no, I want to know. Tell me. You stop doing it. <laughs> Wait, wait, what do you mean? You stop meditating? Yeah. So like for me, if I don't meditate, everybody notices. Did you meditate today? Because I'm just a little bit, a little bit more edgy. Not in a good way, to be honest with you. So um, for me, I believe that if you start your day every day with meditation, and you just give yourself, you don't even need to go 10 minutes in the beginning. Start with, we have one minute meditations on there that are so easy. Um, you just start like that, start to say, I'm going to go every single day and you can check your stats. Is it better to meditate in the morning? It's not, Cause I sometimes do it before I go to sleep. Oh, it is a thousand times better to do it first thing in the morning. I use this philosophy called RCM, rise, click, meditate. I have earphones in my phone. And I literally wake up in the morning, I stay in bed, I do meditation, which is a David G word, and I lay down and I just do my 10 minute meditation and then I start my day. Why is that better? One, I wake up in a good mood. Two, I get it done. So every day I meditate. Whereas if I, my feet hit the ground and I leave my bed and I don't go straight to my meditation spot um, or I start the day, I might not do it. So you said I meditate every single day. There are days where I'll skip a day. And I told you people notice and I notice. I feel I don't feel good when I don't meditate. So now I need to meditate every day. And people say, oh, you lose your edge, you're a little bit too relaxed. Absolutely not. For me, what it does is it helps me be a better, 
mom. It helps me be a better entrepreneur and it helps me be a better human being. Do does your husband, um, does Mark meditate and your kids? Um, Mark is more of a dabbler in meditation. So he will go in and out. He's not full on like I am. Um, and my kids, same thing. So my kids did the program where they meditated on the kids program. Um, one of them did it two times. So they have the tools and they'll use like the 16 second combat breath anytime they feel stressed. Um, and that's also on the app for anybody that's interested. And then they'll forget about it. I, I Great way to be. I think doing it every day and not taking a vote is will give you the biggest advantage. I recently heard or read that even um, meditating can help GRE scores and SAT scores. And so I tried to talk to my teenager about it and, you know, I got the roll eyes, but I'm going to still work on him because I think it could make, I mean, it's very stressful for these kids now and anything to help them would be great. Yeah. Well, actually it's funny that you should say that. And I'm sure you don't even know, but on the app, we have this entire row called topics. And if you go down, you'll see test prep. And what we did was we worked with the number one company in the United States who does private test prep for SAT and ACT tutoring. And we did a 21 series of meditations that are four minutes or shorter. And they're perfect to elevate your test scores, keep calm when you're feeling the chaos, retain more information. They're designed specifically to kind of help you crush your SATs. Oh, that's great. Um, I don't know if you know um, Stephen Kotler. I've been recently listening to things he's done, and he studies flow states. And he mentions that every day you should write a journal with three to 10 things that you're grateful for. And I noticed in your app, in your journal, you have the gratitude journal. Um, what? What? Tell me about it. Why did you put that in there? Well, gratitude is, as Lauren Ekstrom says, a medicinal emotion. You basically are in any state, and if you redirect it, place your hands on your heart and think of three things you feel grateful for, it'll shift your mind and it'll just make you feel a lot happier. I think gratitude is one of the greatest gifts of all time. It helps people sleep, and it helps people wake up a little bit more appreciative and going through their day with more wonder. And so in there, there is a journal where you can not only every night or every morning write down three things that you feel grateful for, but you also can take post meditation notes after your meditation. Because what happens is when you meditate, you have all these brilliant ideas, but you don't want to stop and uh, journal them. It's so funny. David G said, I've met a lot of brilliant um Ex meditators and wonderful journalists. <laughs> I, I, it's like when I meditate, I do always think of something, and then you know you forget. And like later on the day, you're like, "Oh, I had all those good ideas, but now I don't remember them, and I should have written them down right afterwards." Exactly, and that's the that's why that's there. You mentioned earlier about you have teacher training. Is that teacher? Do you do teacher training for? just your studio or is it teacher training for, you know, people who want to learn to meditate and spread it? Do you want everyone to learn to meditate and spread it across the country or? Yeah. I mean, my dream is to have 24 million people in the world meditating. And I think that that would make a real impact on the world. I think the more people doing this, the better the world will be. So we created a meditation program where we are training people. We've, we've done five and we've trained 90 people around the country. We've had 14 different countries. We've had five people open up their own meditation studios. And, and in fact, the one in Tokyo is even cooler than Unplugged. So if you ever go there, you have to check out Medicha. Um, and yeah, we, we literally train them in a way so that they can not only deepen their own practice, but share it with companies and use it and share it in a way where people will relate to it, understand it, and it'll be something that they want to do in their life. So what happens is with some of these deeper practices, not a lot of people have 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes at night to just sit down, create a perfect sacred space and meditate. We teach the meditation on the go method, meditation 
in between moments method, meditation for being a better person, a better employee, meditation for being a better manager. Basically, um, the way you teach it on plug, kind of a lineage free or, you know, look, it all comes from, it all comes from the lineage, but we're not like, we just make it simplified. We edit and we curate and we have a point of view and then we train people to be the top talent in the world. And literally it's a six week program. Five weeks are online. One week in, is in studio and it's led by the number one teacher in the entire country named David G, D-A-V-I-D-G-A-I. And he's trained over 2000 um, meditation teachers around the world. He used to work I, at the Chopra Center. I see you're doing breath work now too. What's the difference between meditating and breath, breath work? Okay, so breath work is, I still, it's hard for me to explain it because I'm not a breathwork teacher, but this is what it appears to be on the outside. So what happens is you breathe like this. <gasps> and you do that very fast. You're breathing in the belly first, you're breathing in the chest second, and then you're letting it release through the mouth. And you do this kind of intense breathing as you're laying down and they're cranking cool music and people like scream and they laugh and Afterwards, they feel like cracked open and they cry and they basically say it changes their life. We have a lot of people who've done it. If anybody who's listening to this is suffering from addiction, whether it's alcoholism or painkillers or whatever they're addicted to, this is the number one thing for that type of person. I personally absolutely love it um, just because it's fun and it's cool and I feel like a huge release after I do it, but it's very different from meditation. It's not about getting into the stillness and silence within, it's about releasing everything that's inside of you. Michael Pollan, um, in his book, How to Change Your Mind, he did it and he said it was an amazing experience. And I've actually watched a YouTube video of a woman doing it with a teacher and she was giggling and then she was crying and it was incredible. It, it's when you come back to Los Angeles, you have to try it. We have it. It's so popular between that and the sound baths. They're so popular. You can barely even get a spot in the studio. Now we're doing them every single day. So we have a breath class and we have a sound healing class every single day at Unplug. So meditation lets you become more awake and more purposeful in your actions. And I, I personally think this is very important when you're experienced different cultures and communities, like when you travel, um, I saw, I don't know if you're still doing it. You do meditation retreats. Are you planning on one coming up or? No, you know, I did the meditation retreat in Bali and it was a huge success. It was so great. But the only thing is it, <laughs> can you imagine during that time was when all the volcanic um, eruptions went off and I was like, I'm never doing this again. I never want to put anyone in harm's way where I can't kind of control the experience. So I, I may, we do little mini retreats here in Los Angeles, but I don't think I'm going to do traveling retreats. You know, I love to travel and I know you have a favorite place to go. Can you tell me about it? Um, yeah. I mean, Jamaica. Yeah, this is my favorite place in the whole world because, yeah, Melissa, you and I have water skied together our entire life. We love water skiing. And one of the things that is so great is there's this little spot by Sandals that's a cove where I can water ski every single morning, and I do. And it just feels so good. I feel very present and alive when I'm doing that. Um, and I just think half it's called Half Moon Resort. And it is in Montego Bay. So that's one of my favorite places to go. But I've been to Japan, which I love. I think Japan is one of the most exciting countries in the world. Um, I'm going to Portugal, which I'm super excited about. I, I've been traveling a lot because that's really what I want to be doing. I want to discover new places, new cultures, and get inspired. One of the things I did recently, too, was Cartagena in Colombia. We went all over Colombia. Have you been there? In Colombia? No, never. Mm -mm. It's a beautiful trip. Um, it, it, you feel very safe there, by the way. I did not feel not safe in Colombia. I felt very safe in Colombia. I felt inspired. Um, the food was phenomenal. The, the you know, housing situation was 
perfect. The guides take you to all the inside places and you feel safe. And it was just great. Did you go with your with the kids? I did. I took all three. And they loved it? They loved it. My kids love to travel and I think it's important for them, you know, to see other cultures and not be insulated from where they are because, you know, they can see the world in this closed environment and at home and it doesn't change them. They need to expand their mind. Just like meditation expands your mind, I believe travel expands your mind and makes you more compassionate to other cultures. Right. And I think it's worth, I mean, like a lot of people were very lucky because we can afford to travel, but a lot of people can't afford to travel. So I think that it's also easy to kind of have these inner experiences, whether, you know, like you live in New Jersey, but you could take your kids to New York City and go to Chinatown and go to, you know, Little Italy. And go. So there's ways where there's all these different communities and all these different cities around the country where you can kind of travel to and have little micro experiences like that that are just as powerful. Absolutely. I agree. You've gone from being a journalist who covered entrepreneurs to being one yourself. How has meditation helped you on this journey? Um, you know, it's funny because when I was covering, when I was working for Glamour, I was really a makeover. Like I really was a fashion editor, but it was something that was very focused on outer beauty and not on inner beauty. And I had a glimpse of that when I worked in that industry where there, when we did those bathing suit makeovers, the women who were size 24 W were so much more confident than the, you know, tall, skinny size twos. And it was the craziest thing. And I was like, I think I'd rather be that person, just like confident, happy, whatever. So what happened was I was doing both. I was kind of studying meditation as I was building this company and also working in fashion at the same time. And it started to feel like I couldn't do the fashion anymore. I wanted to go deeper. So that's what happened. I'm much more interested in inner beauty. And I think inner beauty is more powerful than outer beauty. When you walk, whether someone's attractive or not attractive, whether someone has great body or doesn't, and you see a smiling face with warm eyes, that is so much more attractive than anything else. That is beauty. Fine, one final question, and I don't know if you can pinpoint a person, but... Um... Since you started the studio, I would assume you've had clients that come in all the time. Have you seen, is there a transformation on someone that you could say that this has totally turned their life around and they're just, they're like, Susie, thank you so much. You know, this is, my life is new because I've been meditating. Oh, I mean, honestly, there's so many stories, but it was funny because we, I decided to have this party at Unplug. And I didn't tell anybody, but I hired a videographer and I'm like, okay, it was kind of an annual party to celebrate. We've been alive for three years or four years. I can't remember what year we did it. And I asked some of the clients if they would go talk to the videographer, didn't tell them anything, didn't pay them anything. And it's actually on unplugged.com. So on that video, there is the impatient, angry entrepreneur who's now more patient and more kind. There's the guy who had panic attacks and was at the hospital four times and no longer is holding his little baby. There's the girl who's like freaking out about her finances who no longer does. There's the mom who lost her sense of humor and it brought it back. And there's the girl who is young with blood pressure issues who now no longer has them. So, I mean, those are just some of the people, but the transformations, it works. It works for everybody. There's only one catch and that's, you have to do it. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's really it's really amazing how something so simple can transform everybody. And if everybody could do it, it would just make the world a happier place. I always say, like, if you feel like you can't sleep, if you feel stressed, if you feel anxious, you know, a lot of people use medication to feel better, and that affects their whole body, their whole kind of system. This is easier, quicker. And it makes you feel better. So wake up, meditate, don't take a vote. And it doesn't have to be long to be effective. If you do it for anywhere from 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes a day, you will notice change within, I would say, probably 14 weeks. I mean, not 14 weeks, four weeks. Final question. Mm -hmm. 
anything new on the horizon or are you planning anything new? Do you have any new on, uh, you know, I know you have a book out there. Is there something else? Are you writing another book or? Um, we have Unplug, a simple guide to meditation for busy skeptics and modern soul seekers, which is available um, to anyone who wants to check it out on Amazon. But actually I do have, um, I'm thinking about doing a second book more for people who work because the new things that we're doing is we've been going into a lot of companies. So what's happening is, like, for instance, Condé Nast just bought our app for all the employees, and we've become their turnkey wellness solution. Wow, that's amazing. I know. So that's kind of one of the areas where we'll be expanding is kind of anyone. It doesn't matter whether you have five employees or you know, 100,000 employees like Pfizer, which is another company that I'm going to be teaching at, but we're not necessarily doing the app yet. Um, That is kind of one of the directions that we're going in. Another one is we're in hotels now. So we have the Unplug app at the Ritz-Carlton in room. So if you need to turn down service and you want to go to sleep, you can click a sleeping meditation and it'll just make your, you sleep a lot better when you're traveling. Um, And then um, one of the biggest things that I'm super excited about that's coming up is we were invited one of six apps because, you know, I'm a female founder and our developer for the app is female to go to Apple Entrepreneur Camp, which is so crazy. You basically go to the Apple campus. Have you ever seen that, Melissa? It's like. I've seen pictures, but I, it seems like it would be an amazing place to visit. It is. It's so cool. And we went there about a month ago and then they invited us to be, they, they, it's a free program just for female, um, app and you have to get invited. And I'm super excited that we were, and we're going to be learning about development and marketing and all that. And it's eight days in Cupertino. So that's my next big thing. And that's at the end of the month. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much, Susie. I love talking to you. I miss you. Um, and can I ask you a question, Melissa? Uh, uh, totally. Go ahead. So tell me about this, um, this podcast, like, what are you going to be doing with it? What kind of people are you interviewing? When does it start going live? Can you tell me a little bit about it? It starts going live probably this week. I've already, um, posted, I already interviewed four people already. Um, three were cookbook authors and actually one is the executive director of Delish who wrote a cookbook, um, and how it's beautiful. So she, and one is, um, an online health advocate, but it's mostly on food and travel. My, I like people to get out there and see the world and also experience foods from a different perspective from a com, com, you know helping out communities and being there so that's where i want people to learn about different cultures different foods to expand their mind like you expand their mind with meditation and i want to expand their mind with experiences in the travel and the food Ooh. and i think everybody needs to learn where their food comes from um, how to cook it, um, and things like that to really know what's going on in the world. I agree. I agree. And I think that we're like in the middle of a huge change with sustainability and what's happening with the earth and then how it's drying out. And I think people are ready to kind of kind of turn it around. And yes. And that's my, my hope. My hope is that they're ready to turn it around and, and learn more about. So I've been interviewing doctors and authors and anybody. It could be food, travel, mind, body, spirit, just anything that opens your mind to different worlds and cultures and community. I love it. I can't wait to listen to every episode. Well, thank you so much and eat well and travel often. Well, did. <laughs> And now we are at the Book to Play segment of Eat Well, Travel Often podcast. Here, I report back to you my personal experience. It could be a cookbook I cook from, a restaurant I ate at, even a place I recently visited. If you have any suggestions, please reach out to me. I was recently listening to Dr. Mark Hyman's podcast, The Doctor's Pharmacy. His guest was the famed chef David Boulay, 
Goulet has won a James Beard Award for the best chef and the best restaurant, and he has received Michelin star ratings. I was fortunate enough to eat in his restaurant in Tribeca in New York City years ago when my husband represented him for public relations. But what caught my attention in this interview was his newest venture, The Chef and the Doctor. As David Boulay told Mark Hyman, it is an immersive dining and educational culinary experience featuring world-renowned doctors. I was so excited, I immediately Googled to find out more. And to my surprise, the next event happened to be with Dr. Andrew Weil, the integrative wellness doctor. His healing-oriented approach to healthcare, which encompasses the body, mind, and spirit, is everything I believe in. I jump at a chance to eat Wibule's food and talk with Dr. Andrew Weil. I 100% believe in healing that takes the account, takes into account the entire person. The event began with a presentation by Chef Boule and then Dr. Weil. Dr. Weil discussed that chronic inflammation is the root cause of many serious illnesses like cancer and Alzheimer's. He has traveled extensively and is influenced by many Asian cultures. His anti-inflammatory diet is similar to the Mediterranean diet, but adding Asian influences and spices like ginger and turmeric, green tea, mushrooms, whole soy foods, and fermented foods for their anti-inflammatory properties. He believes, and so do I, that refined and processed foods and manufactured foods are very bad for the body and can cause inflammation. If he could do one thing right now and eliminate it from the American diet, it would be sweet beverages, but not only sodas, but juices too. He encourages everyone to eat dark chocolate, and he's crazy for mushrooms. He says in order to get the health benefits from mushrooms, you should cook them. He also told us about a cooking oil called Thrive Allergy Oil, which is supposed to be better than most vegetable oils. I ordered it, but I haven't tried it yet. After the talk, we had a six-course dinner created by Boule and accompanied with curated wine. The first four courses all included seafood because Weil eats mainly fish. If you live in New York or the metropolitan area or are coming to New York City, I urge you to check out the Chef and the Doctor series. The evening menu and links can be found in the show notes. If you want to find out more about Susie L. of Schwartz, the Unplugged Studios in L.A., or the Unplug Meditation app, go to eatwelltraveloften.net where you can find all the show notes. You can also reach me via email at melissa at eatwelltraveloften.net or on social media, Instagram and Facebook at Eat well, Travel Often Podcast. I'd love to have any comments and recommendations you may have. Thank you, eat well, and travel often. <music>